Hey guys, welcome back. Um, today I'm gonna show you guys how to use the render system in Clo to make some nice renders like the ones we see here, um, to really get some nice details, um, and camera effects working as well, to see the fabrics up close as well as, um, the whole garment. Um, these are the renders that I made before, so I'm gonna show you how to set this um lighting up. Um, it's relatively easy and straightforward, so. Um, let's get into Clo. So this is the project we had last time. Um, the materials all set up now, the jacket is made, everything is ready to create the final render for. Um, to access the render space, we want to go to render up here and choose render. And this is what's going to happen by default. So right now I've, I have no lights in my scene. If I zoom all the way out, I just have my jacket. I can just see the jacket here in the space. And if I click the render to work, we just get this black silhouette. And the reason for that is two reasons. One, there's no lights. And two, if I go to the right side here and choose the image property editor, and I scroll down under background, this is set to transparency. So there's a full transparent background around my um, jacket. If I turn this off and I re-render, just press stop this will run the render this will play any render sequence that you've got and this will stop the render but now that i've stopped it and i've got a black background color i can't see anything um for now i'm going to keep this set to transparency and i will start to add some light so if i go to the right side here under the light properties um i can start to add in some lights from this side here so this is the lights that i have in the scene or anything that is light base so this is the shadow intensity and these five uh, six controllers on the side here will be our uh, light options so the first one will be dome which is this one that's kind of sat like a, a dome if i click this um and i zoom out i can see i have this um sphere appeared in the bottom of my uh, render I can turn off the visibility of this on the right side here. I have a light bulb, I have a box, and I have like a, a, a film. And if I turn the box off, it will stop being visible in my workspace. But for now, it's fine to leave it visible. Um, if I click it, I go to the properties, and this is my current environment map. So if you drop this down here, you will get these different light uh, environment options. And you can see one of them looks quite like a studio. Um, there's different light sources set up and this is all based in an image texture. So this is how we can work with um, existing light sources. So if I choose the studio, for example, and then I hit the refresh render button, let's see what happens. So I've stopped the render now and you can see that now I have this kind of um, gray space around my jacket, but I'm still completely zoomed out because um, this viewport represents this viewport on the side. So if I zoom in um, and frame up my jacket quite nicely in this space here, I can refresh on the other side and we can see the update. So now my jacket is more centered in the viewport. And if I want to save any of these views, like a camera, um, I can go to display in the top side here and then go to display viewport and then custom view. And now we will have this series of custom views. I already have some because I've worked with this project before, but if I were just to delete these, I can right click and delete, I think, or just hit the delete key. Um, you can save these to use in other projects. So if you want to use this somewhere else, you can click save, save them in an output folder, and then you can bring these cameras into any other project, or you can open them out in the same way from any other project. So if you set a camera that you like, so let's say we like this angle like this, I can zoom in a little bit maybe. And then I press this camera icon and my view is saved. So then if I zoom out and I go to a different view and I save this view, I can come back to the other one by clicking here. I can come back to the other one I made by here and I can come back here. So these are now going to be my camera views. So I like to keep this open when I'm rendering because it's useful, um, you know, to set up my cameras. Maybe I want a back view. So I make a back view camera. Um, 
maybe we make like a close-up angle here like this make a camera for this um if i load the render now let's see what happens so now i've loaded this into the render space we've got some light moving around that's fine um to quickly look at what we can change we can change this light angle here so if i move this light angle slider and then i reload the render you can see my lighting has changed angle. So I'm actually gonna move this the other way, I think, into the minus. And that just gets a little bit of highlight down the front of this jacket here. Um, the rest of the lights we wanna add are gonna be kind of not using this um, dome light. Um, one thing to note is you can add your own custom ones in here as well if you want, if you click the add button. Um, you can load your own HDRI light into this scene if you, you know, if there's a, a light that you want to work with. Just to note, if you press this add button, navigate to your HDRI and you can load your own HDRI lights into here. Um, the next thing I want to add though is a aerial light, which is this one here, or a rectangle light as it's called. So I click the rectangle light and zoom all the way out and it's going to be just placed underneath my garment and I want to lift this to the top and place this just above my character and set the intensity to maybe 15. And then I'm gonna set this rendering to see how this looks. So as you can see here, this rectangle light is now casting light down onto the jacket. Um, I can return to my view by using the custom view and reload the render. This is how we get some of this light kind of pouring down on the top of the jacket. Um, the intensity looks quite strong, I think, so I might bring this down to about 10 um, so that it's less intense on the next render. Um, but the next thing I'm going to add is a spotlight. I'm going to put this behind my character to kind of illuminate the back of them. So I'm going to zoom out again, take my spotlight, and you'll see that this kind of has a direction. There's this line, this dashed line coming out of it. That will be the direction this is pointing in. So I'm going to turn this to point directly at my jacket. And then I'm just going to lift it in space to kind of point from behind. Um, the cone angle, I'm going to increase to about 60. And you'll see that this opens up the cone here in the back. So if I go back down to say 20, I have a small cone. And if I have 60, I have a bigger cone. Um, I can set again this intensity to about 10 and I'm just going to run this render like looking at the back to see what this light is doing. Okay, so let's refresh. Now, initially this isn't doing too much. We want a bit more brightness coming from the back of the jacket. So I'm just going to increase the intensity again and re-render. Let's change this to, let's try 100 and just see what's happening here. Re-render. Okay, so you see now there's a lot of light kind of casting from behind. So if I look at this from the front view, and I refresh the render here, it should start to give us some, um, some kind of rim light around the edge of the jacket, but we're not really seeing this because of the background. So I'm going to turn the background back to transparent by going to the image properties here, go to transparency, turn transparency off, I guess and then press refresh. Okay, so there's two transparent ways that this transparency is going to work. The first one is here, which is already set to on. Ground color is set to black, transparency is set to on. So we still have ground, and the reason for this is you go to the light properties on the right side here, and look under the dome light. Um, the last one, the film, with the eye against it, if I turn this off, my render is be more transparent. So, what I'd like to do here is just reduce the intensity of this world light down to about 0 0.5. I'm going to shoot the angle a little bit over. The top light, the top light I think is okay. Um, maybe we just reduce this to 8 and then the back light, uh, we can leave this at about 100, but I'm just going to move it closer to the guy, the jacket, move it to about. this to about here okay and then one last thing that we're going to add is a spotlight uh, which will be a sphere light like this 
And I'm just going to drag this sphere. Wait, that's my dome. No, that's the dome. And that's the sphere. Okay, the sphere I'm going to leave just kind of off to the side and in front. And I'm going to set this intensity to about 5. And then let's re-render this from one of our custom views. I think this is looking pretty nice right now. These are the lights that I'm using. I'm using a dome light, a rectangle light above, a spotlight behind, and a sphere light kind of just next to the the character here. So I'm just going to move this a little closer and a little more to the side. Um, and I think this is good for now. This is basically a three-point lighting setup. So this is lighting our environment. This is lighting from behind. This is lighting from the front side down here. And this is lighting everything from above. Um, I quite like this setup. I use it quite often. Um, the last thing I'm going to do is just turn the transparency back on in the image settings um, and have a black background as our color and just see how this looks against a black image. So let's refresh. I think this is starting to look quite nice against this black background. We have a nice highlight on top of the garment. You can see, you know, the details. Um, the last thing I'll explain to you guys is about the camera settings and how the render works. So for the camera settings, let's look at this from a close up. So I'm just going to use the custom view that I made of the close up and reset this render quickly. So if you see this close up now, everything's sharp and everything's in, in view. We see this nicely in the light, but everything is visible. Um, we're going to add a little bit of depth of field to this. And the way to do that is to go to our, um, our camera settings here, click the camera button, go to the bottom and look at physical camera render only. And I'm going to turn this on. This might be turned off by default, but I'm going to turn this on and then turn on the depth of field. Um, and under focus distance, click focus by left click, okay? So now you'll see that in your render window, you have this kind of little square icon with a dot inside it. And wherever you click will become our focus point. So if I click on this logo, and then I refresh the render, we'll see what happens. So you need to click when the render is happening. So like refresh the render, and as you see the image appear, click. And you'll see now that the back of this image has fallen into kind of a blur like a depth of field and the front of this image is staying in focus because that's where we've clicked so that's how we can easily use the depth of field um just be aware of your f-stop your iso and your shutter speed these are literally physical camera settings so if you know how cameras work use this the iso will infect, affect the brightness the f-stop will as well um as well as the the amount of depth of field but i like to use this to create a more natural feeling image and the last thing is the um how we're going to render this out so if you click in the top in the uh, the image slash video editor and you have image video and you have viewpoint so under this you could select custom views and that would render out all of these custom views so if i press play it will render all my views um if i just want a single view like the current view i can turn viewpoint to current view and then i'm going to set my image size to a4 so it's a large uh a large format image with a high resolution um Go down to the the last one, which is render properties, this one that looks like the, the film board. And just a note here, you can set a maximum time. You can control your puckering from here. So if you want to in, increase your puckering that you've applied, that is controllable directly from here. And um, the max render time, I'm going to set to one minute because I really don't want it to go for very long. And the noise threshold is, is going to determine quality. Um, the higher this number is, the lower the quality. The smaller this number is, the, the more fine the quality. So I'm going to leave this at 0 0.05. And I'm going to make sure that my uh, engine is set to GPU because I have a GPU graphics card. And then if I press play, this image will now render. So this is now rendered out and it says image video has been saved and you can then open the folder where this has gone to and all your renders will be inside this folder. Um, to set the folder, um, we do that here. 
So under the image video editor, the top one, you can go to save file path and then input your own file path and how you want this to be named. Okay. So this will control your image size, quality, resolution. This will control your camera settings, field of view, uh, the depth of field, all of these things under the camera settings. This one will show you how all your lights work and how all your lights are set in the scene. This is how you add the lights on the side here. This um, property, the render property will allow you to change your engine, change your, uh, your intensity of puckering, change the noise threshold for how fine you want the image, um, your quality of light and everything else here. Um, and that's basically it. That's how we work with the um, render system inside Clo. Um, I am going to show you in the next video how to do all of this inside Blender. So I'll see you guys there.